Happy Homebrew Wednesday, everybody. As Jay Poor here from Little Face Brewing, getting ready to bottle up his winter warmer. This winter warmer is the one that I did in secondary with uh, cocoa nibs. Um, the three gallon one. This should be cocoa nibs, pomegranate, and um, strawberries or cherries. I'll have to look and I'll put down what I did in this one. This is the smaller batch. So it'll be right, right about here. So as you can see, it's a nice, beautiful, dark color. Uh, wow, the nose off of this is incredible. Absolutely incredible. It finished at a... They never stop where you can see them, do they? I'm going to call it at... Uh, 1014. That's what I'm going to do. Let's take a let's take a little bit of a test. Pat's fan. This is mine, brother. Well, this is the one anyway. What I probably should have done was transferred this over into a tertiary and let it and let it clean up a little bit. But uh, oh my lord, the nose on this is incredible. Smells so good. You can smell all the stuff in there. I'm really anxious to see how this works. This is the first time I ever worked with uh, with cocoa nibs. Oh wow! Mm. It's mm. oh, I'm picking up the cherry. I'm getting. I'm pretty sure it's cherry. Matter of fact. Before I go any further, I'm going to look and, and see for sure. Oh yeah, this is nice. This is really nice. That pomegranate gives it actually just a little touch of sourness. It's really dry. It's drying off real well too. Mmm. Oh yeah. Very nice. Very nice. So, seeing that it's homebrew Wednesday, you got to be enjoying a homebrew. As you can see, I'm in the middle of things. I'm just transferring over. I already got my bottles washed. They're sitting back there. I'm just transferring this into the bucket right now. Um, I already got my sugar water mixture in there. So, all I got to do. Once I'm done with this, is actually start bottling. It's pretty boring process, <laughs> to be honest with you. But what I'm on, what I'm enjoying here, is a brew from Laramo 22. This is a old brown dog that he made and was kind enough to give me some of. Oh wow, the two of those mixed together really nice. Hmm. So my plan is is to bottle this when it's a smaller batch. It's only three gallons, and bottle the other side of it too, which is just uh, uh, that one. I didn't put the pomegranate. I just put the uh, fruit and uh, cocoa nibs in it. So uh, be looking forward to see what that one tastes like. But I got to check the the fruits on these and see what they actually. Right now, are. I'm actually drinking on the. Uh, the oh my I, I forget I don't really have a good name for this one yet but I'll work it out yeah OMFG is what we started off with oh my fucking god IPA um, and actually this is only about uh, two weeks carbonated and I poured this glass a while back and the head is hanging on this is the whiskey whiskey barrel aged IPA And it has got some serious legs on it. This beer has got a lot of flavors going on. This is a, uh, this is one to share with folks. But I tell you, as it's sitting here warming up, it's getting nicer and nicer. The flavors really come alive. It's got a lot of citrus, orange peel. You can taste the whiskey. You can taste the oak. You've got the bitterness from the from the hops. Oh yeah. But now we move on. I finished bottling the three gallons of uh, 
it was strawberry. So I had that one in the secondary with pomegranate, cocoa nibs, and two and a half pounds of strawberries. Um, now that fermented down to, I believe I had said it was 1014. Now, the more fascinating part about this, now this is the exact same uh, beer that I have going on that I'm transferring over into the bottom bucket now. This is the other six gallons of it. And on this one, I put in cocoa nibs and um, these were sweet cherries, right? Yeah. Yeah, three pounds of sweet cherries. Um, and that's all I did with this one. So it's the winter warmer with uh, cocoa nibs and uh, sweet cherries. The fascinating part about this is the three gallon portion of this fermented down to 1014. This one, the finished gravity is 1022. I've never had that happen before. Excuse me, I've split beers up plenty of times in the past. I've never had them actually ferment out differently in the secondary so pretty cool so with that said there's the uh, there's the sample of it the nose on this one again is is fantastic but a lot more of the spice of the winter warmer is prevalent in this particular sample more so than the the three gallon one So there's the color of it. It really looks chocolatey. I mean, that's the one thing that's consistent between the two. And the nose is beautiful on this. Let's give her a taste. Oh my God, that's a winner. There, honey. Oh, wow. A winner and super easy to drink. Nose on that is nice. This was the, this was my idea, by the way. Yeah, you didn't let me put the uh, pomegranate in it, and I'm glad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad now, because the other sample actually the pomegranate gave it a touch of sour, which is nice. I was that's what I was shooting for, but this being this is like a chocolate covered cherry. That's what I. Yeah, yeah this is like a chocolate covered that's cherry. Exactly what I said. Mm. Okay, yeah, that's a winner right there. And that is, hopefully that gets a little more body on it as it carbonates and ages. Yeah, that's going to Oh, yeah. Fermenter just emptied out. Time to move on. Finish the night off with my Oktoberfest. Very nice, easy drinking beer. So, tonight I bottled the three gallons of the Winter Warmer with cocoa nibs, strawberries, and pomegranate. Uh, that gave me a full case and a six pack. Yeah, off of that. Bottled the six gallons, actually five gallons, uh, because of all the cherries and stuff that were left over. The other half of the same beer, which was cocoa nibs and sweet cherries. Uh, something we learned was apparently my my uh, final gravity reading will change with whatever I put in the secondary. Did not know that. Uh, very interesting. As I said earlier, the strawberry, pomegranate, chocolate, uh, winter warmer finished at 10, 15, 14 and the uh, chocolate cherry winter warmer finished out at uh, 1022 and wow they are two totally different taste in beers I really can't wait to try uh, Pat's fans and see what his tastes like I think he's gonna like this one and I'm, I'm gonna enjoy his his ought to have that nice spice to it um, so yeah my daughter helped me uh, with washing bottles Thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anybody that, that, that bottles beer, brews homebrew, knows if you get a little bit of help, it goes a long way. 
I'd still be doing it if I if if I was doing it all by myself. Um, so yeah, I learned that my finished gravity reading will change in a secondary depending on what you put in there. Very shocked with that. Didn't 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 understand it at all. But uh, hey, I'm good with that. Tasted the uh, OMFG uh, double IPA. Uh, Whiskey Barrel IPA Revolution. Actually, that beer is the Revolution IPA. It's part of the Revolutionary Series beers. Um, spot on carbonation was really nice. Uh, beer is coming along quite nicely. It's going to age well. Um, I'm going to actually, before I go up to bed, I'm going to put the Revolutionary Braggot in the fridge and give that one a taste tomorrow. Uh, what else? We have ingredients here to do uh, upcoming beers. Looking forward to it. MM is going to be doing a, a brew, and I'm going to let her touch on it. Very interesting twist on uh, cranberries. That was the dog that just jingled by. Um, and I'll let her touch on that one when, when she gets to that. So that's in the next week or two. I'm going to be brewing up a uh, stout. I'm going to be doing a uh, first time ever milk stout. So I'm actually, what I'm planning on doing is doing a straight up milk stout. And then I want to do a uh, <laughs> chocolate peanut butter milk stout. And I want to do these two, you know, two full batches. So um, actually what I might do is do a double batch and keg one of them. It's actually a pretty good idea. I might do that. It's nice to have a stout on, on tap. Especially, that's a great reason for me to get a nitrous system hooked up. Right? Absolutely. The other thing that we've learned, so those are stuff that's coming up. The other thing that we've learned, learned is that there's no way I can bottle that much beer in one night, take video of it, and then edit it on Wednesday. <laughs> I've tried this a couple times now. So this will obviously go up Thursday or Friday, depending on how much time I get to edit it back together again. Um, so it'll it'll be, I, I just don't have that much time. I got to learn to get this stuff done earlier in the week. That way I can just post on Wednesday. <laughs> but either way, there's a lot of good stuff coming up. Christmas is coming up. Me and uh, Pat's fan want to get together again so we can have a tasting. I think he kegged his. I just bottled mine. So by Christmas or right after Christmas, um, we should be able to do a tasting. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I'm going to talk Kimbo Cracker into bottling his tomorrow. So we'll have them all pretty close to being ready. So that's it. This is a late edition homebrew Wednesday. <laughs> this is SJ Poor from Little Face Brewing. Enjoy the, enjoy, enjoy the fruits of your labor, folks. <laughs> and brew beer. Brew wonderful beer. Cheers.